Hey guys, Alan here. Welcome back to my workshop. Um, I'm starting this one almost at the end. I'm sitting on a stool which uh, was broken and needed to be repaired. And um, it's only a short video, but it gave me a chance to share a couple of bits and pieces with you that you might find interesting. So let's get into it. So on a recent project I was using my um, roller stool, I think they call them, and as you can see it had a catastrophic failure. Um, and I went over backwards. And I've no doubt it was made for a hilarious home video, and I wasn't hurt thankfully. But my head fetched up within inches of a steel toolbox, so it could have been very ugly. Anyway, what I wanted to do was point out the risks associated with this thing, at least this brand, because what this has had is a, a complete uh, failure of metal fatigue around here. And um, I think it probably uh, was a while in, the, in happening, but went unnoticed until wham, over. So I'm going to try to repair it, but I wanted to point out to anybody who's got one of these things. I mean, it's rated to 300 pounds, and I can tell you I don't weigh anywhere near that. So clearly the thing is just pee weak in this essential uh, critical area. So as you can see, the brand name is Grip. Uh, I don't know where it was made, not Australia. It was imported from somewhere, but uh, clearly not fit for purpose. All right, so I've cut the middle out of the, uh, the original seat mounting plate. I'm going to reuse this piece because this tube has a taper in it that matches the top of the, the cylinder. This piece is destined for the junkyard. It's two millimetres thick and I'm going to re replace it with a piece cut out of this material which is four mil thick plate. I think it'd be more appropriate for the job. And to do it I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to use this uh, cold cut saw which I haven't really had much use out of yet, but I think could be just the ticket for this job. So, uh, I think you can see that saw does a pretty fair job. That's four mil plate and it just goes through it like, well, I don't know, it's like you're cutting plywood really. Um, and it's cold to the touch and no horrible burr. So it's perfect beast for doing this sort of job. Remembered the face mask that time. Well, that's, that's done a pretty spiffing job. Give it a bit of a close up. So that's done a really neat job. And I managed to cut this piece exactly to the 200 that I was looking for. Um, this piece, I'm not so sure I got quite so close. Oh no, it's pretty close as well, isn't it? I'm going to be happy with that. Okay. Just wondering how to finish that off. I dare say I could just break it off, but I'm wondering if that's a, the best option. No, I'll get a hacksaw and cut it. These saws are used for little buggers too, sheet saws. They, uh, the spine is the same thickness as the kerf, so you can cut through uh, sheets. All right. Actually, one other nifty thing about this saw is that um, it catches a lot of the chips. Um, and this uh, container on the back here now we'll be able to see that. Probably not very well, but anyway, there's a whole heap of chips in there, which would otherwise be on the floor. Uh, 
Okay, let's go and mark this out for some holes. Oh, <laughs> start making the excuses now. <laughs> There's six mil screws and I do drilled six mil holes. So I don't know whether it's gonna work or it won't. We will soon know. I don't know how accurately the whole pattern was drilled in the seat. So marked mine out by measurement based on the holes in the metal plate. That we shall see very soon. Yeah, these other ones are miles off. Let's try rotating the plate a bit. I'm going to have to make some holes a lot bigger, I think. Well, that's three lined up, or oh, almost lined up. I'm not going to force it. It's started, but it's not right. That one started as well. Oh, so we're not uh, three kilometres away, but clearly the holes need to be bigger to give it some room. So I have to work out which way to move the holes a little bit and um, do that. I suppose I could just make them all oversize. <laughs> anyway, I'll bring you back when I sorted that out. Okay, well that's sorted out the nonsense with the screws. The whole pattern in my plate matched the original plate exactly. The issue was variability in the holes in the wooden base. The original mounting plate had uh, these holes were 7.5mm for a 6mm screw. So they had heaps of slop to play with. Anyway, I solved my problem by opening these holes out to 7mm and that's good enough. It all lines up now. So the next move is to cut these corners off. I'm not going to bother trying to make this round, but I will cut those corners off. They add no value and they... Uh, or some sort of a knee or hand hazard, so we'll get rid of them. And I think actually I'll put another hole in the middle here, and a hole in the middle of that, so that uh, it makes it very easy to uh, fix that in position before I start welding it. Right, well as you can see that's got the uh, corners knocked off. An respectable looking octagon, I guess. And um, I've got a screw tapped into the top of that. Um, I did think about countersinking it so it could stay there and I thought well there's not much point really so that screw will come out when uh, after I've welded it which uh, is the next thing to do. Okay so I've got the uh, socket welded onto the plate. The last bit of making is to put the fulcrum for the lever uh, back on and uh, I had originally intended to use the original part and I cut it off the plate and I decided in the end I didn't like it. So I've made my own, uh, slightly more robust. Uh, it didn't need to be stronger to be honest but it'd just be easier to weld. So now I can put that in there. I can tighten that hole up a little bit too with the one I made. Make it flop around a bit less. So anyway, that'll go in there, do that, perhaps you can see it better if I do it like that, I don't know, anyway, um, so yeah, so just got to weld that on there, and then uh, flop some paint on it, and the job's done. So I'll bring you back when I've got a finished article. Right, there we have it, a quick and easy project for a change. Actually, this paint's remarkable, isn't it? It's just what was left over from when I made the trolley for the bandsaw, but uh, it looks like it was uh, custom mixed almost for this job. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is drop this on top of the spindle and she's done. Okay, so here we go. Oh. Right, well that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed it, <laughs> got something useful out of it. In any case, thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.